with MQA, GCSE, English language papers are now live on the website offering everything you need to get exam ready. Included is a full question paper plus a detailed video walkthrough of grade nine example answers. As with all of our others, this walkthrough features explanations on how to improve your writing, showing exactly what examiners are looking for, how to hit the top bands and how to make the subtle changes that can really elevate your work. Now in this video, I'll be summarising every question for you and detailing the suggested timings and key skills that are relevant. If you're looking for more support, drop me a comment and I'll point you in the direction of anything useful that we might have to help you out. Last thing, don't forget to use the timestamps for paper one and paper two. So starting with paper one titled Explorations in Creative Reading and Writing, the total paper is worth 80 marks and lasts one hour and 45 minutes. It's split into two sections. Section A, the reading section, is worth 40 marks and section B, the writing section, is also worth 40 marks. In section A, you'll be given an extract from a novel and all questions will relate to this single piece of fiction. I'd spend about 15 minutes reading the questions then reading the extract and then annotating because if you quickly skim through the questions before kind of reading it, you'll have a decent sense of what you're looking for in the extract. Okay, so moving on to the questions. Question one is a list style task worth four marks and should take about five minutes. Obviously, if you can make back any time here, that's great, but do always check it back as in theory it is and should be an easy four marks. It's very literal. You simply need to pick out four basic facts or details from a specific part of the text. No analysis is needed, just quotes or paraphrases, and they have to be accurate without kind of any explanation. My tip here would be to make sure you're only stating four things so you don't panic and feel like you've run out of things to say. That sounds obvious, but for example, you might write the house is dated and unclean, but this would actually make two points. So split them up into the house is dated and the house is unclean. Okay, moving on to question two. This is a language analysis task worth eight marks with 10 minutes recommended for completion. You'll need to explain how the writer uses language to create effects, describe or influence the reader. Use a paragraph structure like petal and focus on features such as word choice, similes, metaphors and sentence structure. I want to make it clear here that I think it would be silly now, this close to exams, for you to stray away from a paragraph structure that your teacher has already taught you already. So please stick to what you know and perfect that instead. Here also I'm to cover the kind of two to three diveable quotations explaining their impact on the reader. Now what I mean by diveable is choosing a quotation that is juicy, something that you know you can say a lot about, hopefully even multiple interpretations. You of course need to think about the impact on the reader there as well. Now always think what does the writer want us to think, feel or imagine and try your best where possible to think of connotations of words too. Right, next is question three which focuses on structure and is also worth eight marks with about ten minutes again suggested. Here you must analyse how the writer has structured the text to maintain the reader's interest. Discuss things like shifts in focus, contrasts, openings and endings, pace, dialogue and paragraphing. For example, perhaps the writer shifts from one scene to another back and forth really quickly. You'd need to think about why that might be and what effect that creates for readers. Use terminology like narrative perspective, zooming in and out or cyclical structure. And here again, you want to try to write two to three paragraphs. Your final question for section A is question four, which is an evaluation task worth 20 marks and should take about 20 minutes. It typically asks to what extent do you agree? So you'll need to give your opinion supported by evidence and method analysis on that statement. Analyze both language and structure as you did in question two and three and ensure you cover what the writer does and why it's effective. Just always go back to why you agree or disagree, which can be done through analysis of the quotations you choose. Okay, next is section B, which involves one extended writing task and should take 45 minutes, including time for planning and proofreading. It's worth 40 marks. You'll choose one of two prompts, either write a description inspired by a given image or write the opening or continuation of a story based on a theme. Spend five to 10 minutes planning your response Think about characters, setting and structure. Use a clear structure that includes a beginning, a build up, a climax and a resolution and aim for vivid vocabulary, a variety of sentence structures and use literary techniques such as similes, metaphors and personification. At the end, proofread your work to correct any spelling, punctuation or grammar errors. 
The marks are split into 24 for content, focusing on imagination, clarity and structure, and 16 for SPAG, spelling, punctuation and grammar, that is. So just remember to really, really keep that in mind. So just to summarise, the suggested breakdown for this paper is as follows. Five minutes for question one, 10 minutes each for questions two and three, 20 minutes for question four and 45 minutes for question five. Now overall, just thinking about the best way to revise all of that, because it can be quite tricky, I would suggest practicing exam style questions consistently at this point, exposing yourself to model answers for those questions as well. The more familiar you are with the format, the more confident and prepared you'll be on exam day. Right, let's now move on to paper two. For AQA GCSE English Language Paper 2, titled Writers' Viewpoints and Perspectives, the total paper is again worth 80 marks and runs for one hour and 45 minutes. It's divided into two sections again, section A, which is the reading section again, worth 40 marks, and section B, which is the writing section, also worth 40 marks. In section A, you'll be given two non-fiction extracts this time from different time periods, and all questions will focus on comparing and analysing these sources either together as a comparison or individually. Like I said for paper one, I'd spend about 15 minutes reading the questions, then reading the extracts and then annotating, because if you quickly skim through the questions before reading, you'll have a decent sense of what you're looking for in the extract and you can mark off the line numbers required for each question too. Question one is a true or false task worth four marks and it should take about five minutes. But again, you might be able to make back some time here. Just don't forget to really check. You'll need to select four statements that are true based on source A. No explanation is required, just shade or tick the correct boxes. Be careful not to infer or assume anything that isn't directly stated in the text and also be careful. I find that often there's one of the four that can be a little bit tricky, so always check each statement to eliminate ones that are definitely false before moving on to question two. Question two is a summary task worth eight marks with a 10 minutes kind of recommended for that. You'll summarise either similarities or differences between the two sources focusing purely on content rather than kind of analysis. It's a summary, but you'll also have to make inferences too, which just means you'll say things like this suggests. You'll want to support your points with short, relevant quotes and then make a brief inference on this. A helpful structure is to kind of keep in mind PQI or point quote inference and then a comparative point quote and inference for the other source as well. Right, next we've got question three, which is a language analysis task based solely on source B. It's worth 12 marks and should take about 12 minutes. You'll need to explore how the writer uses language to achieve a particular effect. Select two to three quotes and zoom in on word choices, tone and any kind of figurative language. Discuss the effect on the reader using a structured approach such as petal again. This is essentially the same as paper one, question two, but there are more marks available. And you tend to get a little box featuring the correct lines given to you in paper one, but in paper two, you'll have to make sure you're looking in the correct section in the source booklet itself. Right, next we've got question four, which is a comparison of viewpoints and attitudes and is worth 16 marks with a suggested time for around about 18 minutes. You must compare how the writers present their views and how they express them through methods such as tone, emotive language and rhetorical devices. Essentially, you can analyse anything, language or structure, that shows how they feel about the situations they're in. Comment on both content and language using comparison phrases like whereas, similarly or on the other hand and you can structure your answer by alternating between the two sources or by grouping points by theme just make sure you're balanced though because if you only talk about one source your marks will be capped right finally we've got section b which involves transactional writing where you will be asked to produce a non-fiction text such as a letter an article a speech or an essay this section is worth 40 marks and should take 45 minutes including planning and proofreading You'll be given a prompt on a specific topic. Some examples on the top of my head are that you might have to write a letter to your MP about school lunches, a speech arguing for or against mobile phones in schools, or an article about the importance of protecting the environment. It's typically linked to the themes expressed in the sources though, so you can take a little inspiration from these. It's important to identify the form, audience, and purpose of your writing as this will determine your tone and structure. Use clear paragraphs and linking devices like however, furthermore, and in contrast. Include persuasive techniques such as facts and statistics or emotive language and direct address. My tip here would be that before you begin writing, plan three to four main points. 
as you're marked on your ideas and how clearly you get them across. So make sure you know your argument first and how you'll kind of build it. And actually, another important thing here is that, yes, we know you might not actually care or have an opinion on the topic, but pretend that you do and pretend to be completely passionate about it. No one is going to listen to or read an argument where the person delivering it sounds completely kind of unbothered or like they don't care. So please do make it sound like it's the most important thing in the world to you. Finally here, the marks are split into 24 for content, focusing on how convincing, clear and well-structured your argument is and 16 for spag, spelling, punctuation and grammar. So that is everything for AQA English language. Obviously, do feel free to check out our papers, our night before live sessions and any other useful tips on our playlists for support. Best of luck in your GCSE exams.